My name is Herodoc TK. As you see on the screen, my story and my book that will be released is called A Toxic Tale for the Follically Challenged. And the reason why I'm called Herodoc TK is because it's taken me over two decades to research issues associated with hair loss, hence for my name, Hair Doc TK. These photos on the stage here, I want you to look at, and I want you to just think about this for a minute, and what would you assume about these photos on the stage, and what would you assume about myself standing here on this stage? What are your assumptions about this person in these photos? And remember, I was young, I was in my 20s back then, and I was actually living my career in Hollywood. This is a photo here of my recent news interview that just actually happened a few months ago um, regarding breast implants. This was a journey I also had after Hollywood, and that journey soon ended as well. I would like you guys to all put your mask on. When you guys put this mask on, I want you to feel like a time when you felt like you may have been a victim. We're going to turn that word victim into the word hero. Hence what this story is all about, right? Now you're going to see a quick clip. So I obviously was raised in Amish country, which you probably didn't assume from those prior photos. <laughs> those are a few of my friends. I was raised very Pentecostal, conservative Christian. I was only given a few options at that time where I was raised. I could either be a factory worker, be a farm worker, get married and have kids, which I have no children, or learn a trade, which I did. Growing up, I always wanted to be a superstar, which I even told my father, I think I was probably 12. We would ride snowmobiles, motorcycles, hence for these red boots. Those are also going to come out at the end of my story. I always wanted to be a superstar so I could take care of my family and support my parents and buy my father the rototiller he always wanted. This is my mother and my father. When we were on our first cruise in the Bahamas, I think I was 12, and the biggest issue I had with that trip is I couldn't take my blow dryer, which at that time I knew meant something about my career 30 years later. I'm going to talk about my mother for a moment. My mother was an extreme, conservative, natural guru. Her answer to everything that I was going through was fruits, roots, seeds, nuts, and the Bible. My mother knew everything about natural cures and actually helped me moving forward in my journey. These are just some of the foods that I grew up eating in Amish country. We have um, a thing called red beet deviled eggs, which are made with apple cider vinegar, which is that bottle in the back, and it's actually probiotics. You all have your masks on. I want you guys to think right now about the word dream, and if you could, what would be your dream as a superhero? My dream was to make money to support my family. That photo that you see on the right, I was in pageants growing up. It's called the Little Miss Reading Dumpling Fair, and the I was in Baywatch. That journey also was very short-lived. We're now going to fast forward a decade later. This is a picture of one of my knees quite a few years ago. I was being cast for a series on Breaking Bad in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I had a horrific accident which blew out my knee. I was no longer able to do stunt work that I've been accustomed to for the last 30 years. Let's take a look at this photo as you see kidneys in this photo. This photo I'm going to explain a little bit about my misdiagnoses. In my 20s I was diagnosed with lupus and it actually was a misdiagnosis. At that time I did not have lupus. I was given medication for a disease that was improperly diagnosed to me. In my 30s I was having my knee replaced and by my 40s, I had renal cell carcinoma and I lost a kidney. Hence, for this photo, one of those kidneys is now missing. I'd like to share with you at that time, I actually had Epstein's Barr virus and osteoporosis, which was misdiagnosis back then, but it was simple to heal. I never would have questioned my doctors back then. Let's walk through what happens to a person at such a young age in this way. This picture is of my hair loss. As you see, this is very severe. I lost 90% of my hair. I'm going to refer now to the diagnosis that I had with lupus. This actually occurred from all of the prednisone that I was taking. It caused hair loss, bone loss, joint loss, teeth loss, thyroid issues, stomach GIs, and numerous things that created more inflammation in my body. This treatment was hard on me because it affected my brain, which is called exterior psyche. This major impact on my exterior psyche also led for me to start support groups 
which stem from hair loss and autoimmune disorders. I was determined at this time when I lost my hair to get to the root issue of my illness and find out why I actually had so much hair loss. This is a picture right now, if we see, of a clogged hair follicle. I'm going to begin describing the ongoing chronic illnesses that I was experiencing, the treatments that I personally underwent, and the scientific understandings I began teaching myself. If you see on this scalp, you'll see the top layer, which is called the dermis. That's a clogged scalp. I had no idea back then that my hair loss was all a deep-rooted issue. It wasn't from the chemicals. It wasn't from the color. It was something more severe than that. What does all this have to do with hair loss, you're asking yourself? And how did I find this all out myself? I will tell you now there's three key words. Inflammation, inflammation, inflammation. Inflammation is the root of all dis-ease in the body. If we take a look at this picture right here in this slide, and we go through the brain, the skin, the cardiovascular, kidneys, bones, liver, thyroid, lungs, GI tract, muscles, my entire organs and system were being affected by all of this inflammation in my body. No one could figure out what that inflammation was, and that's why I was determined to find out what the root cause is. This issue also affected my kidneys. Medication, ongoing stress, nutritional deficiencies, fungus, lack of cellular energy, which we call oxygen, overload of antibiotics, which I was given to treat my issues, all called inflammation on my hair and my scalp, causing massive deterioration and ongoing chronic illness. This was a pretty brutal time in my life. This was after I had my kidney removed. It's called a nephrectomy. I had my full right side kidney removed, and I believe this was about two weeks after I had that surgery. My body was completely medicated and compromised that it escalated the cancer to stage four. Little did I know then what I know now. I was given no other choice from my doctor back then but to have my kidney removed. I had researched for about a year after that diagnosis with renal cell carcinoma, and I asked everybody, is there a way I can grow a new kidney, do stem cells, change my life, change my diet? Is there a way I can get my kidney back? Because of my current background with my stunt double work and an active volunteer and facilitator for what I do, which is athletic coaching, I wanted to make sure I could keep my organs because our kidney regulates our blood pressure, our thyroid, it detoxes heavy metals. Hence, so you guys know why I'm reading cards, because after I lost my kidney, it also affected my peripheral cortex. Sometimes it's hard for me to remember small details. This photo right here signifies something important to me as well. I wanted more hope for myself. I became a volunteer, as you see, for the American Cancer Foundation. I'm a facilitator at Ironwood. I'm an facilitator for the Look Good, Feel Good Foundation and for the National Kidney Foundation. For the last 10 years, I've dedicated my life and my time to help others with hair, health, and hope. I was being extremely active, as you can see. I was doing these events three to four times a year, and I still wasn't getting the answers I was looking for. I wanted to know all of these people that I'm facilitating why their cancer has come back. And I knew that I didn't want the cancer to come back for me. I'm going to quote something from Christopher Reeves, who I believe you guys all know to be a hero. A hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. That's when I decided I needed to be my own superhero. The hero in this story is my father and my mother. Who is your hero? Let's take a minute and think about this with your mask on. Who is somebody that's uplifted you and helped you through a near-death experience, terminal illness, issue that you're having, stress in your life, breakup with a boyfriend, whatever you may have. You need to find somebody who's your hero. That was my father. I became my own hero. I had to learn. I had to teach myself and I gravitated towards anything I could do to stay alive, to heal, to get well. It was actually my father who recommended to me, maybe there's an issue since you moved from Amish country to Hollywood, something happened to you. We're not sure what happened to you, TK. You moved to Hollywood, you married a doctor, you had cancer, your knee blew out, 
you have all these issues. What's happening? I said, Dad, I don't know, but you guys need to pray for me. My parents are extreme Christians, so we prayed a lot. Right here, we're going to actually take a look at my news interview. Doctors told her she was cancer-free, but this Valley woman's body was telling her something else. I was tired and achy. It was just something wasn't right. So we actually started... After years of searching for answers, TK realized one of her breast implants was leaking. ABC 15's Katie Connor picks up her story from here. Shortly after TK was diagnosed with cancer, she realized her right breast implant was leaking. For 20 years, this thing that was inside was releasing all of this mitotoxin into my bloodstream. I actually found an oncologist here in Mesa. He had mentioned, hey, if we remove the implants, you may technically feel better. And within a few short months, she did. I feel 150 times better. I have seen so many patients get better after the implants are removed. Dr. Fang is one of the top doctors in the country when it comes to explants. She says she's worked with thousands of women who were suffering from a long list of illnesses. Many of these patients also have certain mutations, so it's very possible that toxins can build up much faster in these patients than others. Dr. Fang is so skeptical of implants, she no longer uses them in her practice. She believes more studies are needed. They need to look at 10 year, 15 year, 20 years. Dr. Fang. Months later, TK feels like a new person, but she admits the experience took its toll physically. I don't talk about it. Or it's really tough. <clears throat> and emotionally. Can't cry. Now she wants her story to help others. Most people really aren't going to listen unless they have a near death experience. And I would have never, ever listened unless I had cancer. If I didn't have kidney cancer, I'd probably be getting another boot job. You see on that picture, this is actually what's called the capsule on the shell. What's in here doesn't make a difference. Doctors can tell you there could be silicone, there could be saline, there could be gummy worms, there could be anything. It's not what's in the bag, it's this actual capsule. This guy right Right here has 37 heavy metals and if you look at this capsule if you guys can see the dots in there these have been out my surgery was December 23rd where I had these removed they're still leaking you can see the pockets these have been leaking silicone into my body for 21 years and I will say this for a fact that those implants if I pass them around one implant that was on my right side is significantly less fluids than the left. That's where all my chronic illness was. My knee replacement, my kidney loss, my hearing loss, my vision, my peripheral cortex. This is a list. I won't go over all of this with you, but if you read some of these things and symptoms, it's almost crazy. This is when I had my real epiphany because reading on this list, normal people have these symptoms. If every one of you look on the screen and go down through those symptoms, you go, jeez, oh, like I have that and I don't have implants, right? So there's something going on and I had to figure out why it was causing all my hair loss. I've been a hair restoration expert for over three decades. I am 50 years old. I'm finding out that in the state of Arizona, there's some practices not regulated by the State Board of Cosmetology. I really don't agree with that, as some of my colleagues here would. We've spent thousands of dollars on our education. I didn't have to get a PhD to become a hair doctor, but I've spent 60000 on my career. I want to change the law in Arizona. This is the petition I have right now. Take a look at these photos here. I want you to think with your mask on. Think right now for a moment. What is your superpower? I want you to take a moment and think about my story. I want you to think about the causes in my life's journey. I decided to make something great in the face of a tragedy. I actually was given no other choice. I was alone, I was empty, I was afraid. I needed to be my own superhero. Extending hair is not my only superpower. Extending the quality of life and having a purpose to help many others is my cause. Hence, for these photos, the picture in the middle is why I go by Wonder Woman, and she's blonde now. I am now able to offer hair, health, and hope 
as a hair loss sufferer, kidney cancer survivor, and a breast implant illness advocate. But that's not where my story ended. Because a lot of it is about assumptions, right? We assume we need a master's degree. We assume somebody blonde is a certain way. We assume someone with implants is a certain personality, right? That is not the case. What is your superpower and who is your hero? I'd like to end that today. My name is Herodot TK and thank you very much.